What is going on, fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf, and we are continuing our 2D Endless Runner tutorial. In this video, we are going to be implementing a loose UI, a start menu, and basically a gameplay loop. So being able to replay the game once you die. So currently, in the last video, we set up some in-game UI. We press K to start. That will not be the case in the rest of this series, because we're going to be adding in a start menu to actually start the game. And we can avoid the obstacles, uh, jump over everything we want, just dodge, and then when we die, that's that's it, the game, there's nothing you can do to restart the game, that's just the end. So let's start in order. What we're going to do is we're going to create a starting UI for our game. So inside of this, we're just going to go into our canvas. We can actually go to our scene view here, um, zoom out, you can see our canvas here, and we're going to add an empty object, and we're just going to call this the start uh, menu, and this is basically just going to be the screen which we see at the start. Uh, I'm going to stretch it out to the whole thing, and then we're going to create a, a UI image, um, which we're just going to call the background for this, and we're going we're gonna to stretch this out to the start, but we're going to give this like 128 on either side um, just to bring it more to set. So we go into game view, you can kind of see what that'll look like here. We're also gonna make this black and probably half the opacity, maybe a little bit more, let's say something like 196, 200. Yeah, that'll do. It's just so the text can actually be seen a little bit better on this screen. Again, you're gonna wanna style this up to make it look really cool. You're probably gonna want some custom graphics. I'm just showing you with some general geometry where you can use in-game. Um, but yeah, basically you're probably gonna want a few other things as well. That's fine, we'll sort that at a later date. But for now, let's just add in some text, a so UI text, um, and we can just call this, let's say the title. Um, and let's just call this, what's this game? The 2D Endless Runner. Um, and then let's bring this to the top. Um, we'll give it 64 minus 64 padding inwards. And we'll make it sound like 640 wide. We'll bold the characters, center them, we'll even capitalize them. Let's have a look here. You can actually see what that's looking like. And let's, um, let's auto size it so it goes quite big. Um, and that should be good like that. I think that's looking pretty good. We go into game 2D Endless Runner. Again, you're probably going to want to title that saying much cooler than just 2D Endless Runner. You do what you think is best. But we, in this bit, it's just going to set up a button which is going to start the game, basically. So we're just going to go into our UI, look for the button, button there. And we're going to call this the Start Button. We're going to set this, we're going to leave it in the center of this, give it something like 400 width with like 100 height, maybe even 200, I'm going to do it 128 by 320, no, wider, uh, 480, that should be good enough. Um, and then let's mess around with some of the settings here. So the first thing we want to do is I just want the um, color of this, we're going to mess around with these ones, we're going to leave it as white, but we're going to mess around with the interactable, so the normal color, we're going to set this to like 128, maybe way lower, 64, even lower, uh, 32, and we go in-game, have a look at it like this, so the normal color will be like that, let's go to our actual start button, let's make this black, um, we're going to auto-size it, and probably, um, Make it bold with that, and it's gonna say play like this there. Hopefully that should be pretty good. I also I want this even more, like maybe even 16. What's zero? Zero would be nothing, right? It's a 16. I want that to be real um you know, not great. Then highlighted color, we're gonna do something like 64. Um and then the pressed color, we're gonna again make it white. But we're going to set it to something like, did I set that one to 64? Uh, let's do 128. There we go. And then the disabled color will be nothing because it means it's not working and we don't want it. Although it should always be working, but just in case. Uh, and again, with the selected, I'm just going to do the same as the huffer, which is 64. There we go. So there, there are the values we're going. You can, again, mess around with this as much as you want. Now, if we just press play here, I'm just going to hover over this button. And look, you can see when I click it, just the thing where it's selected is that. Hover over it, and then we click. 
you can see it does a little flash there we go that's all we wanted there it's just a simple play button it doesn't look the best but that, that's fine we're not here for looks right now we're just here to make a functional game so we've got a little play menu uh we now need to mess around with the actual uh click offense so let's go to our game manager here open it up and we should probably create a start menu manager or maybe even just a cam i think we actually have a ui manager yes yeah, so we'll probably also open that up in a second now the first thing is in our game manager we just want to delete this pressing k button to start the game instead we want a public void called start game in here and we're probably going to want some sort of function to be able to call this so i want to say on i want a public we actually need to import using unity engine dot offense and then i want a public event called it's probably a unity We'll get a unity event and we are going to call this on play and we're we'll going to set this equal to a new unity event um, which we call like this then inside of start game we're going to say on play is equal to invoke this and this will start the game we also want to set is playing equal to true inside of start game once we call this so once there we want to go to our ui manager and then we want to just create a public void called start or play button handler this is what we're going to use to handle the click of the play button and all we want to do in here is say um gm dot start game to actually call the function which will then call this hand on play handler then when we do that we're also going to want to close our menu um menu so what we want to do is private game object which we are just going to call our um start menu ui and then inside of our play once we click play we will just set it set active equal to false we then also want to go back to our player collision script and where we actually destroy our game object we actually do not want to do that anymore what we want to do is say game object or sorry game object dot set active to false we don't want to destroy it we just want to turn it off so it's no longer in the scene and that way later on we can actually recall this to turn it back on now what's going to create enough of script for our player to be able to turn him back on but i think we can reuse the player collision script here if you're building a, a game with a lot more interaction you'll probably want a separate script i'm going to put it in here so on our start method we want to actually get the game manager dot instance um, and then we want to say on play is plus equal to and then we're going to oh sorry dot add listener sorry we want to add a function and then we want to create a private void called um start playing or refive player we'll call it activate player and all we're going to do is say game objects dot set active equal to true we're going to go into our listener here and we are just going to say uh, activate player like this and now anytime on play is called it will also turn back on our game object another thing we're going to want to do is also destroy all of our obstacles so once we spawn an obstacle we're probably going to want to destroy it once it the game ends however another way to do this is actually to get the obstacle when it flies off screen to collide with an object and destroy itself so let's go back to unity and let this all compile so you can see here we got the start menu ui which we want to drop in here and then on our start button add click we want to go to our canvas here and drop it in we don't want to go to ui manager and click play button handler to actually replay the game so now when we hit play we should be able to just hit play and the game should start you can see that is started and our obstacles are being spawned so what we want to do is just avoid some obstacles and now when we die that is it game over for this so what we want to do is i'm actually going to duplicate the start menu and call it game over over here in our title we want to rename this to game over 
I'm just gonna hide the um, the actual start menu for a moment. And then in our play start button, we're actually gonna leave that the same because what we wanna do is basically the same thing. We wanna start the game again. But we're gonna call this, just change it to say replay instead of um, what it was. And we can also add a back to menu button as well. Um, we can move this down, we can move this up. So let's say uh, minus it up 64 and move this button down by uh, minus 64. We're probably gonna need a bit more to add 16 either side, giving it a bit of space in between. And then in the text, we just wanna play this to back to menu. We also wanna give this some padding. So if we go down to our extra settings on the left and right we just want to add 16 on either side probably all the way around and then we want to actually set it so it cannot overflow or sorry wrap so we just want to disable wrapping so it all sits in one line now what we want this to do is we actually just want to remove this we want to add in our um game over object and set the game object to deactivate and then we want the start menu to actually be set to on. This is just gonna basically turn off this and open up the next one. Now by default, we want our game over menu off because uh, we do not wanna see it. But back in our canvas, we actually wanna open this up again and get a serialized private game object called the game over UI, which we can actually set up a function for We'll call it a public void called um, activate game over UI. Where in here we're just going to say game game over UI dot set active equal to false. Or sorry, to true because we want to activate that. And back in our game manager, we actually want this to be well. Once we call game over for it to happen, so what we want to do is create another public unity event which we will call on game over and say equal to a new unity event we can then take on game over and call it inside when we call game over now we go back to our ui manager we can actually go to our start method and say dot game manager dot on game over dot add listener and we want to add our activate game activate game over ui to actually instantiate it i also just want to take this out of here because what i want to do is i actually want to use the play button handler just to call the start game method in here and then we're going to use the actual ui to disable itself when we need it so let's go back to unity and on our start our start menu start button we just want to set the start menu UI to be inactive. And then in our game over start button UI, we can also set it to be inactive. So let's try this and see what happens. So we can hit play from here. And then if we just jump around, wait for some obstacles to come. And if we just let this one hit straight away, we should. We got a game over has not been assigned. So that's my fault. Back over in our canvas, we actually need to set our game over UI here. So let's try that again. We hit play and then we just wait for the bullets to come in. Here we go. Let's get hit by this bullet and game over. You see that? Obstacles stop spawning and they just go off screen. We can then hit replay and we'll be back in the game now being able to play again. You can see this obstacle will be coming. We can avoid it. Um, here comes another one. Just avoid it. And then let's say we got hit by the final one. Boom. Problem is, we replay now. This obstacle is still coming and it's going to kill us, which isn't good. Also, just checking the back to menu button also still works. So once we um, get destroyed, we actually want to set up a new game object called the obstacle um, parent, which is just going to hold all the obstacles we spawn inside of here. So over on our spawner, we want to open this and call a serialized private game object called the obstacle parent. Then when we instantiate any obstacle like this one here, we just want to set up or sorry, spawns obstacle dot transform dot parent is equal to our spawns obstacle or sorry, our obstacle parent like that. Oh, I've realized I've set this as a game object, but we can just set this as a transform. 
and that should fix that error. Then, once the game ends, so what we want to do is actually we're going to need a start method here, but I'm just going to create a private void clear obstacles, which inside of here we're just going to say spawns or sort, we're going to say for each transform child in the obstacle parent. So for every single child transform inside the obstacle parent, we're just going to destroy child.game object. And now we'll remove all of our um, children when the game, well, we need to set so it calls this function when the game ends. So up here we can say start is equal to game manager dot instance dot on game over dot add listener. And then we can call clear obstacles to actually call this function when the game ends. You can also do this on game play. So when you play the game, it will clear the obstacles instead. So you can still see the obstacles moving once the game ends, but it doesn't really matter. It's up to you how you want your game to work. So let's go back to Unity and test everything is now working as it should. So when we hit play, we should be greeted with just our play button here. Again, this isn't pretty. You can pretty if it later. We're actually going to do a section where we make this all really good looking later on. But for now, it's just basic stuff. So we're going to hit play and then we're going to play our game. We're able to jump, uh, duck, and all the other stuff. We can duck, jump, duck, jump. You can do whatever you want. Let's jump and then let's duck under this one just so we're using all the mechanics. And then let's finally get hit by this yellow boy here. We've been destroyed and we forgot to assign the variable. That happens so often. On spawner, we just need to set the obstacle parent there so it destroys all of the ones that are inside of this. Let's hit play, play, and here we go. So now anytime an obstacle spawns, we should see they're inside of the obstacle parent. And when we die, you can see they all get deleted so when we replay it starts again from the beginning and there we go now guys that's going to be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and don't forget to leave a comment down below now i want your feedback on this series so if there's anything you want to see in this game such as sound audio or anything like that please let me know in the next video we're going to actually set up some difficulty to this game so so far once you play all the obstacles and all the stuff spawn and they just keep coming in at the same speed which could be really easy and really repetitive so we're going to add in a difficulty ramp that will make the spawner speed up and spawn more obstacles and make all the obstacles spawn faster okay guys so if you want the source code for this project as well you can go down below to the patreon link which will link you to my patreon which allows you to support the channel and also get the source code on a lesson by lesson basis so if you only want a specific lesson you can download it from that point and work from from there. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.